how to know when you are ready to take your ex back. Hey guys, my name is Danny and I'm your life and relationship coach. And this is a subject, a topic that I get all the time in my one-on-one coaching sessions. I see it in the YouTube comments all the time, in the Facebook inbox. And the question usually is, when do I know I'm ready? right? When can I reach out to my ex? I've been in a no contact period for a set amount of time. I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I can, you know, win them back. I think that I can really change the dynamic and have a successful relationship, right? Fine. That's great. That's amazing. But the question really becomes at that point, are you really prepared for the outcome, right? Um, So usually the question that I ask my clients is, are you ready for the answer, right? So if you do reach out to your ex and the answer is no, I don't want to see you, I don't wanna talk to you, or no, I'm not ready, are you emotionally and mentally prepared for that outcome? And if you're not, and it's going to derail the progress that you have made in regards to your self-development, if it's going to make you upset, if it's going to, if it's going to trigger some kind of anxiety or stress, then you're not ready, right? So one of the primary things, and and, and tip number one, and this is one of the primary things that I tell people all the time, you know that you are ready to reach out to your ex when you are prepared for the outcome, no matter what the outcome is, right? So if it's a yes, if it's a no, if they don't reciprocate, if they don't reach out to you, if they are ecstatic to see you, either way, you are okay with the outcome. You have come to terms with the fact that there's a real possibility that you may not get your ex back um, or that there is the real possibility that you may get them back as well. But you also are realistic in your thinking and you know that you can't control them as an individual, right? They they have to make their own decisions um, and they may feel differently than you do. And if you are okay with that, if you are at peace with that and you know that you can handle whatever the answer is going to be, you're good, you're solid. Then for me, I would say absolutely 100% reach out to your ex. You are ready. The second part of that is regaining your self-confidence, right? You've regained a sense of yourself, your independence, your self-identity. Um, because a big part of this is when, when you break up with your ex or when your ex breaks up with you, there is a period in time, there's a period of time in which your self-confidence takes a hit, your self-esteem takes a hit. Um, and it takes a little bit to rebuild that, right? Or maybe throughout the relationship, your confidence and your self-esteem started to to fall apart and you became insecure, you became needy, clingy, codependent, whatever the case may be. It's going to take time for that to, to, for you to heal and for you to be able to build yourself back up again. So if you are feeling more confident in yourself, then for me, I am okay with my clients reaching out to their ex at that point because they have some kind of foundation, somewhere to start, something to fall back on that does not rely validation from somebody, rely on validation from somebody else, right? Self-confidence is all about having positive dialogue in your mind about yourself, not being too judgmental on yourself, being able to validate yourself, being okay with who you are, where you're at, and where you're going, um, and just generally, generally feeling good about yourself, right? You don't need the approval of somebody else to, to get by or to feel good. So if you are at a place where you could care less what your ex has to say, or you don't really care um, if they, they have something negative to say, fine. I'm not necessarily saying that they're going to say something negative or that they're going to be mean to you, but there's always the chance that the the outcome may not be what you are anticipating or what you are expecting. And self-confidence really helps with kind of fortifying those emotions and, and allowing you to think from a more logical perspective as opposed to leading with emotion. Because when we lead with emotion, we make irrational decisions. And usually what that does is that derails our entire self-development process. The third one that I tell people is that you've forgiven yourself and the mistakes that you have made. So often I see people in my one-on-one coaching sessions where one of the biggest things they have trouble letting go of is, is the mistakes that they made in the relationship, right? They, you hyper-focus on them and you obsess over them because you, you are convinced that had you not done that one thing, 
had the, the conversation gone differently, had you made that one step, had you opened yourself up more, had you, you know, not yelled at your partner as much, had you not gotten angry, whatever the case may be, we sit down and we hyper-focus on these things and we, we legitimately feel crazy because we want to change the past, but we can't. You cannot go backwards. You only have the present moment. So forgive yourself. Understand that as a human being, we all make mistakes. You know, being in a relationship, navigating a relationship, it's not something that we learn, right? It's not a course that, that's provided for us in, in school. Um, so we have to learn through trial and error and through the errors and through the trials, you grow, you develop, you learn, you, you figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You understand what your needs are, what your expectations are. And from there, you're able to set healthy boundaries and all of that stuff. So really kind of changing your perspective and your mindset as right as well, right? Like the mistakes actually have a positive outcome because they teach you a lesson. Now, it's completely up to you how you want to apply that lesson, um, if you choose to learn the lesson, and if you also choose to practically apply it the next time around, right? So whether it be with your ex and you have a second opportunity to be with them, or if it's in the next relationship. So again, just, just forgiving yourself for any mistakes that you made in the past, because at the end of the day, they're in the past can't change them. And the only thing that you can control is your present moment and look to the future for something better. The fourth part of it is that you've taken accountability for your actions, right? You are fully and consciously aware of the mistakes that you made. And you can say to yourself, yeah, you know, I messed up on that. And it wasn't a good idea. Um, I could have approached that differently. I could have said that differently. Um, I could have, you know, invested a little bit more time or whatever the case may be. And this kind of goes hand in hand with forgiving yourself. Um, but it's really about acknowledging the mistakes that you make because in any relationship recovery, in any rebuilding of, of an attraction, there has to be the ability for each individual to take accountability for their actions. If you are unable to take accountability for your actions, you're not going to be able to form, sustain, maintain a healthy, a healthy relationship because it requires a give and take. It requires some kind of compromise between the two of you. It requires you validating your partner for the way they are feeling and you being validated in return. And that's not going to happen if you are unable to fess up or take responsibility for your mistakes. The final one is, are you comfortable setting boundaries, right? Boundaries are so important in a relationship and most people have a very negative uh, perspective or perception on what boundaries are. People think of boundaries as limitations, right? Um, as blockages, as, as, as negative, but at the end of the day, they're not. You know, setting boundaries in a relationship is incredibly healthy and it's actually highly recommended because what it does is it allows you to, to maintain a sense of self-identity right? Allow you to continue to operate as an autonomous human being and have freedom of choice and, and love yourself and, and express to your partner your needs and your expectations in a healthy way. And if you are unable to set boundaries, if you still struggle doing that, trying to get back with your ex, trying to rekindle a relationship, it is very possible that if you were unable to set boundaries in the first relationship with them, you're gonna have difficulty setting boundaries in the second relationship with them, and you are potentially doomed to make the same mistakes. So practicing during this period of time, during this no contact of setting boundaries. And if you have gotten good at setting boundaries, then by all means, reach out to your ex, it's fine. It's, 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 it's time for you to, to rekindle that connection. So a good way of practicing setting boundaries is with friends and family, right? During this period and seeing how good you get and seeing how comfortable you are and how uncomfortable you are. You know, it's going to feel uncomfortable in the beginning if it's something that you are not used to, but the more and the more you do it, the more comfortable you become and the more second nature it feels. Now, if for you, you're struggling with no contact, you don't really know how to navigate this no contact and you just feel like you want to reach out to your ex, you feel like you're ready, all of those different types of things and you just need a little bit more guidance or support, we do have a product that I would highly recommend for you and it's called the Perfect Radio Silence and you can find it in the product page um, or the product section of our website and it walks you through how to structure your 
no contact period, the reasons for the no contact, goals that you should be setting, things that you should be working on, and, and really kind of creating a strategy for yourself so you feel like there is some kind of direction, some kind of roadmap so that you can be successful in your no contact period. Again, this is something that will, I guarantee you, will change your perspective, it'll change your mindset, and it will help you get out of this kind of limbo rut phase where you don't really know what to do. You don't know whether you should step right or you should step left. You don't know if you should take a step forward or a step back. So I highly recommend that product. Like I said, it is the, uh, the perfect radio silence and you can find it in the products section of the website. If you like this video, if you're related to this video, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below. I also love having open dialogue with people. So, if, you know, if there's any opinions that you have, any questions that you may have, um, maybe you've been in this circumstance before and you have some tips that really worked for you, please drop them down in the box below. I like to read as many of them as possible and I try to respond to as many as possible as well. Um, maybe you just want more detail. You want a little bit more information. You can visit us at www.withmyexagain.com where we have a multitude of different articles and blogs and videos related to this topic and many other topics as well. If you want to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you can book directly with me or any of the other amazing coaches that we have on the team. Again, my name is Danny. I'm your life and relationship coach. I hope you're staying happy and healthy, and I'll see you soon.